think it is the same one. And it's actually it was Craig that spotted it. Oh, you see it's moving in there. So let's see. If maybe we're going to see if maybe we can. There's a bit of. Oh my God. I'm so excited. My goodness. Oh, it looks. It almost looks too big to be inside of that hole. Like if we couldn't see anything else, I would say that it was actually a leopard in there. That is incredible. I think this was such a good find on Byron's behalf and now we know where it is. And it was actually, Craig, like I said, as we were driving past, he was like, oh my God, I saw spots inside of the tree. And I am sorry <laughs> for saying, oh my God, again. <laughs> I really need to start thinking when I get excited. It's still in there and it looks so big. Marie, you're wondering if Janets and squirrels um, coexist peacefully inside of the tree. They can. They would probably just not share the same nest. So this will be the Janets one and he would not be sharing it with a particular squirrel. But there seems to be other holes in this tree. I think there's one f higher up. So perhaps up there. So if the tree is not hollow all the way there, I wouldn't be surprised if there were actually squirrels that lived all the way up there. But this is going to be such a great exercise. Perhaps we can get this Janet relaxed enough to start poking its head out. Maybe later on tonight. That would be amazing. We can almost... Yeah. Wait, you're moving. I am, I, I'm so confused. I don't even know where the head is. The head is above. Are you sure? It would make more sense if it was above. Okay. I think this hole in here is probably quite big and he's now rearranging itself. Evan Riedel, you're wondering what Janet's feed on. Well, a variety of things. Oh, there you go. There's a little face. Hello, guy. They feed on a variety of things. Uh, small fruits, small insects, little mammals, eggs pretty much any or anything they can find. They're also predators, one of the nocturnal, smaller nocturnal predators. Uh, often you'll see them hunting moths, um, just flying insects as well. This is such a great home for this little genet. And it's proof that even when the trees die, they are so vitally important out here in the bush. I mean, look at the home it's providing for for this genet is it's a great area for this genet to come and hide during the heat of the day and i mean it's camouflage it's just perfect look at that unless i think <laughs> craig because he's sitting higher than me he's almost sitting at eye level with this genet and it's incredible beautiful i am so surprised this is probably my favorite finding of the day just because now we know where it is, or at least now I know where it is, and we can come and check. And he can become our Janet friend. Are you going to move again? It's very hard because of the light to see inside, but perhaps late at night with the infrared. Can you guys imagine? That's going to look very nice. There is a tail for sure. Ah, and there's a little face! <gasps> I don't think I think he's trying to find a good spot perhaps the sunlight it's actually bothering it hello <gasps> look at that no oh screenshot screenshot that was incredible Andy you're wondering if there are any mink in South Africa as far as I'm aware no we do have other species that are very likely related to it and perhaps the genet is one of the ones that's distantly related to them. And I think genets and honey badgers are as well distantly related now. He seems to have retreated further into the into the cavity of the tree so we're gonna leave it now. I think this was an incredible sighting and I think we owe Byron a very big thank you for this because he was the one that actually spotted it yesterday. I, this is probably one of my, my most favorite things now about trees <laughs> or about this particular tree. That was incredible. 